Oh, the appreciator's back again. Oh, man. I, and I do appreciate all the appreciation. Uh, the uh, Overnightscape Underground Facebook group has been very kind and uh, much obliged to uh, some really incredible podcasters uh, who, as I said before, and uh, real quick, I do want to, I'm going to talk about a bunch of people from that channel who have been really nice and do incredible shows uh that we last episode if you missed it we spoke about a few but uh immediately i want to talk about chad bowers who also refers to himself and his work as titfos t-i-t-f-o-s in case you're thinking something weird it stands for the incredible true facts of space and he does these incredible i mean the titfos channel right on youtube uh has just incredible and absurd and cool things um and one of the things he's done that's been very kind uh, on and off i do some uh, dabbling in weird musical creation and uh, he's been kind enough to do some really neat uh videos for some of my music and you'll find those there um he's done very odd segments for the Overnightscape Central program that I do, and a number of them have been excerpted and put up on the TITFOS YouTube channel. So, indeed, if you have a taste for the weird, the funny, the profound, uh, that might be a place for you to sniff around, listen, watch, and... Uh, I, I, my stuff on YouTube just as, well, this podcast, I just use a static image. Uh, I don't think you guys want to see me flailing around and talking into a microphone. Uh, I, I, I have a performance style that's built for audio production. Uh, I wave the hands around too much. Uh, I, I'm not a presenter in that way i don't think anyhow uh, I, I i think i it would not be appreciated where if as if i just put a regular still image you can walk around you can listen to it and you don't have to stare i, I have no visual content to share with these appreciations uh chad is just a really cool guy and uh, as long as i am going over some of the greats that uh, participate and chad still does he's done a few things for the ongoing beatles examination that we're doing on the overnightscape central and uh, that segues us into my next appreciation um, my cousin keith who was one of i guess when i was a little kid a co beetle fan uh and certainly somebody who uh, is a huge beetle collector and fan turned me on to uh, someone posted an old tv special that i've actually never heard of uh in 1965 um john lennon and paul mccartney uh in tandem with granada television of the uk in fact it was the 16th of december 19 1965 when this was broadcast and it was a program called the music of lennon and mccartney uh, and it's really an incredible i hope it stays on youtube forever uh check it all you have to do is search the music of lennon and mccartney and you can see for yourself and uh, this will have some spoiler material uh what this has is the George Martin Orchestra. Peter and Gordon doing the song that Lennon and McCartney wrote for them, A World Without Love. Um, Lulu, the pop star of the 60s, doing her version of I Saw Her Standing There. Of course, she does it, I Saw Him Standing There. Uh, some people I've never heard of, Alan Haven and Tony Cromble, Fritz Spiegel's Baroque and Roll Assemble does a medley in a Baroque 
era style and then the Beatles come on and perform I'm pretty sure it's a lip sync but it's still very cool to see them day tripper with a bunch of go-go dancers and that's just part one of three part two starts with Paul McCartney on acoustic guitar uh, playing yesterday but Marianne Faithful takes over and that's just uh, Marianne Faithful, of course, a friend of the Rolling Stones, and in the 80s had somewhat of a comeback. Um, a fellow by the name of Antonio Vargas does a cover of uh, She Loves You. Uh, Dick Rivers, whoever he is, does a French version of the Beatles song Things We Said Today. Then Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas do a song again that uh, the Beatles gave to them, Bad to Me. Celia Black does another Lennon and McCartney song, It's For You. And then the George Martin Orchestra is back. George Martin, of course, the fifth Beatle for all intents and purposes, who produced just about all of the Beatles albums, except I think the original version of the Let It Be album. And it What a collaborator. And uh, he does, his orchestra, a version of This Boy, Ringo's theme. And then a really neat thing, Henry Mancini, mostly famous for his soundtrack music and theme songs, notably the Pink Panther song, which... He does a solo piano version of If I Fell, and there's a neat little moment where uh, Paul McCartney introduces him and, McCar- and Mancini rather says, thank you, John. <laughs> I, I'm not sure even if that was intentional or not. Um, somebody named Esther Phillips does And I Love Her, of course, says And I Love Him. And I've heard the single, but I never knew Peter Sellers actually did a performance of his satirical cover of A Hard Day's Night with the lyrics delivered in a Shakespearean mode. Which it's, it's still hilarious. And the show ends with the Beatles doing We Can Work It Out, which is definitely a lip sync. If you look closely, Ringo is miming playing the drum kit, and he's not hitting the drums. But this... I've never, I didn't know it existed until yesterday when my cousin told me. And, and, and we can thank Brett's cousin Keith for that one. And uh, a, a, an appreciation definitely goes out to Keith for all he has done throughout the years to foster whatever um, creativity. I mean, when we were kids, we hung out weekends and the, the, the sleepovers and watching monster movies and reading a, another thing that is lost to time that was so important in the 1960s. I mean, there were no books on horror movies, really, maybe one or two, and science fiction movies or any of that junk culture of genre. But there was Forrest J. Ackerman's magazine, famous monsters of filmland what a magazine i mean yes probably by today's standards there were a lot of inaccurate uh historical presentations but there there was no vhs they with one of the things they did that was really cool is for some of the great classic horror films especially the universal ones which were just the great canon of that era um, they would do something called their film books and it would be like a 10 12 page magazine feature with the complete story of the movie accompanied by photos from the movie and uh, you don't you can't possibly realize what a thrill it would be to uh, get those and articles on Lon Chaney and Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi and Lon Chaney Jr. and Vincent Price, all of the uh, basic building blocks of uh, 
amazing horror stuff. So um, I, I, if you ever get a chance to see some of the back issues and you're sort of a horror movie maven, these are golden. Forrest J. Ackerman was an incredible collector. He was a literary agent for a lot of science fiction and mystery writers, and he built this incredible collection in the Acker mansion as he called it and i know a few people who had the privilege of going to this while he was alive and uh, there was a huge auction uh, just before he passed he uh, consented to downsize and sell all his stuff and there were things like original models from king kong and the ray harry house and films all of this stuff this was the only place anybody did articles and wrote about this stuff so uh, important, important stuff in popular culture history and uh, very appreciated then and even now the lingering effect is uh, what you're hearing sort of from me. Um, oh, and uh, I, 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 speaking of music, I am going to do a review of uh, Neil Young's very first album, from 1968. Now, uh, these songs, he was a member, uh, uh, for those in the know, you know this, of a band called the Buffalo Springfield at the time. And he was planning, uh, writing songs for the next Buffalo Springfield album, which didn't happen. So uh, he enlisted or was enlisted by a noted producer, Jack Nietzsche, who, uh, I don't know if he's related to the philosopher. I have a sneaking suspicion uh, it was a pseudonym or he wasn't related, but uh, someday, someday I will find out. And it has this cool psychedelic cover. uh, And I really hadn't listened to this album, I think, ever. If I heard it, it was a million years ago, and I've forgotten it. So uh, we're, we're going to do a little... I took notes. <laughs> yes, we're going to do a little song-by-song song, uh, examination of this uh, very interesting uh, folk rocky acoustic... Uh, it's in... Uh, it has strings, and uh, I Bry Cooter plays on it, and members of the band that later became Poco, who, if I'm not, they had a few hits in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. The first song that uh, appears is one called Emperor of Wyoming, and this song, uh, and many of the songs on the album, have a string section, which actually works uh the song overall has a a lopey country feel kind of a psychedelic cowboy song uh it's a nifty instrumental and uh i like it and neil young doing an instrumental wow and uh what turned out to be my favorite song on this album uh is the second song uh well emperor of wyoming i give three out of four stars five stars can happen but that's for the super exceptional things um so emperor of wyoming the first song gets three stars the second song my favorite on the album is called the loner and i never heard this song and it could be one of my favorite neil young songs of all time really nice psychedelic organ it has that buffalo springfield effect to a certain degree the chorus has a great feel and uh it might be a little strength lengthwise but uh the strings it, it, it's a great song and uh the uh next song i give two and a half stars it's uh, a romantic country song with a jangly guitar called if I Could Have Her Tonight. Um, it feels a little contrived, but not bad. Uh, I, it's not a dismissible song. Uh, it's uh, a little more filler sounding than the preceding tunes. Next up is a song called I've Been Waiting For You, which I give two and three quarter stars. Uh, it's a little melty facey. He's looking for a woman. Oh yeah, well, uh, aren't we all, Neil? It has a diff- a decent feel and groove and a nice fuzz guitar. And uh, the ending 
just seems a little sudden, but again, two and a half stars for that one. Um, and then that there are two songs that I only give two stars, and this is one of them, uh, The Old Laughing Lady. Um, it, it, it's, it's a slow song, which already, it, it, especially with Neil Young, a slow Neil Young song is like, I don't know, Neil needs a little cadence going, or he's going to either put me to sleep or bore me to death. It tries at something that doesn't really happen for me. Uh, there's some poignant moments, but it doesn't hold together. Um, it has some R&B background vocals that just suddenly come out of nowhere, but don't save it. But he doesn't back down, and the song, another thing against it, it goes on for six minutes um then there's uh, another uh song called string quartet from whiskey boot hill which i give three stars it, it's inexplicable but it, it's a nice touch to the album wonderfully weird uh and yeah three stars you can't go wrong uh the next song here we are in the years is just very neil youngy um, it's a little jangly, likable, and he does some harmonies with himself through uh, the miracle of overdubbing. And uh, it has strings, but they're used very, very economically. And uh, three stars for Here We Are in the Years. Um, the next song, What Did You Do to My Life? Um, two and a half stars for this one. It kind of has a birds-like sound, like B-Y-R-D, uh, the band from the 60s. And it has some layered vocals, which are nice, and a bubbly fuzz guitar. It can be a little wishy-washy kind of thing, but inevitably, it, it's okay, a little better than okay. And then comes the other two-star song, we loved her so long and yeah my, my that once the chorus hit my face just kind of scrunched up it, it just it, it doesn't work it is not working is uh what i wrote down here the background vocals don't work for me um neil seems eh meh and uh the uh it, it's just the background vocals at the end are just poor bad and strident unnecessarily um and then uh, a three and a quarter star the last song on the album the last trip to tulsa um it's a it's a quiet one it has a dylany lyric uh try and it builds uh it gets kind of bangy nice simple guitar uh, they may have even improv this uh it's quite decent it's mostly dreamy and the vocal can be really tender and personal and and, and a little contrasty I, I i really think this was a one take just just go for it kind of thing and uh the banging guitar towards end makes it just a little like i guess i'd call it trippy and uh yeah those are how many songs five six seven eight 10 songs on this, and it's 1968's eponymously titled Neil Young album. Overall, uh, the average for it is 2.8 stars. So uh, it, it, it's a fine listen. And if you've never heard it and uh, you like other Neil Young, I would say, yes, you should find it, purchase it, listen to it. Maybe it's on Spotify. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I'm just learning uh, about Spotify. I mean, I knew it was there, but I have my own musical collection, and I like picking my own stuff. And even when you do a playlist on Spotify or tell it, let it do the algorithm thing, uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I like making my own playlists still. I guess I'll do some other album reviews, maybe not in this format, but uh, we're, we're still trying stuff and experimenting uh, with your uh, kind ears. And again, any comments, if, if I'm doing something that's really annoying or not working, you need to let me know. And uh, the email address, I'll toss it in the middle of the show this time, for any of your comments or suggestions is always 
kpqr dot t o r c at gmail dot com. And if you're not, be in touch. Let me know. It, it it's it's gonna work. Um, and and Frank did uh, an overnight scape uh, that I listened to today. It's it, it came out in the last day or so, and uh, Frank has become a vegan. But he sometimes reminisces about uh, the, the meat foods that he once ate. And he talks about the Underwood deviled ham. The little canned ham. Th- Every so often, I still get it. And uh, it's, I wouldn't recommend it. it. It's definitely like already grandfathered in. And it's kind of a comfort food maybe. But I don't think most people would like it uh, although it's not as bad as i don't know if you've ever tried the vienna sausages which i kind of thought i'd like you know little miniature hot dogs i guess is what they resemble but ugh, it, it really i you i don't want to know the cuts of meat that are in vienna sausages or why the city of vienna would ever be associated with such a thing because yeah, it's just not a good thing. And something else I appreciate that, I mean, that it really is a dying form. A lot of things that uh, were once considered great entertainment. I mean, silent films, most people don't have the patience. They're in black and white. There's no talking. The subject matter and storylines are creaky, uh, hard to relate to. Uh, None of the actors are familiar, which it's just even like Charlie Chaplin, which and Buster Keaton, who when I was just a little younger, had some sort of uh, I don't know, frisson still with the public mind. Uh, it, it, silent films, gone and off. That, that's, uh, I will be talking about silent films, silent film stars and all that. Uh, but today I want to touch on uh, another uh, mainstream form that it, it, it's gone. Uh, so few people are interested uh just the old collectors, people my age or older, when it comes to old-time radio, I'm among the youngest. Uh, one of the people on our Overnight Scape Underground channel, Shambles Constant, is carrying the torch. He likes uh, a lot of old-time radio and uh, plays them on uh, some of his programs. He does some just collage uh, collection shows that have all kinds of public domain and creative commons elements. Um, and right now he's carrying the torch for old time radio on the overnight scape underground. And one of the torch bearers in general, because, uh, yeah, the people who collected and, uh, tried to preserve and keep this form available. I mean, there's so much of it available online, but, uh, Not too many people that I know. Uh, I try to turn them on to programs, and they don't have the patience. And, I mean, I can appreciate that. Uh, There's a lot of things people present to me that I just, I can't approach because it's too alien, and it's going to take too much time and effort to develop, cultivate a taste for it. And I think old-time radio has this problem uh back in the days before television for those of you not in the know there was radio and there were shows just like there were on tv but they were audio only uh, dramas comedies soap operas soap operas were big uh in this realm and uh some of my favorite shows i mean one of the most popular of all time was a show called the Jack Benny program. Uh, I don't know how many people today under say 40 ever have heard or would even enjoy Jack Benny. He played this uh, lovable but miserly character and was surrounded by this incredible cast of interesting other characters. His valet, 
Rochester, who I guess is kind of dated because Rochester was a black man. And uh, yeah, sometimes the jokes get a little, what would be too far for today's standards. So there's that. Um, And a lot of stuff from this era simply won't be appreciated because nobody's going to put it out there because they're just a little too dated in that way. Um, he always had a tenor singer, notably uh, Dennis O'Day, who would sing some sort of Irish love song every week and played this vapid young man who just kind of goofy and stupid. But he did, did it with such a plum, and that's the thing. Yes, there was racism. There probably always will be to some degree, but I don't know. I, I, part of me want there's well, there's good racism and there's bad racism, but I that's not an answer nor a solution. We really need to just appreciate one another regardless of uh, where we come from or what color our skin is in uh so i mean so long as you're at not actively being a criminal uh i don't think it makes a difference what color anybody is they should be proud and be able to be proud of their heritage because that 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 is an important i mean i just heard that we lost Tina Turner in the last 24 hours or so uh, after a long illness. Uh, She was great. What a ball of energy. And I probably first appreciated her in the classic 70s movie of the Who album, Tommy, where she portrayed to perfection the acid queen. Um, a great scene and uh, I, does the Tommy movie from the 70s hold up uh, I'd like to think it does Ken Russell did some really cool films over the years and that no doubt was my first Ken Russell movie I was just a crazy kid and uh, I had to see the Tommy movie I think I saw it at a matinee my brain is still firing on all cylinders. But that was, yeah, that is with, uh, Roger Daltrey played Tommy. Keith Moon played uh, Uncle, Cousin Kevin. Um, or did he play Uncle Ernie? Yeah, the, the two pervert relatives. Uncle Ernie uh, liked to fiddle about, and Cousin Kevin was the uh, physically abusive cousin uh, to the blind, deaf, and dumb pinball wizard, Tommy. And, uh, of course, in that movie, the legendary Elton John had a part as the pinball wizard with these huge, huge boots and uh, an even more absurd than usual. He used to wear all kinds of crazy decorative eyeglasses, and the ones he wore in the Tommy film were just so extra cool oh man and 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 just like that i have uh babbled myself into another uh, ending of a program uh, thank you for being here and uh i hope you're back i this show i feel like i was a little more drivelly i don't know but could be the heat uh summer is coming to new mexico and whenever possible i mean once summer's in full boil we'll be doing this show with a little extra fuzzy sound in the background because yet the the air conditioner must be run when it's hot and boy does it get hot in new mexico uh we're all praying for a milder summer than last year but we will see and uh in the meantime I, uh, again, thank you for listening. Maybe we'll catch you another time. And uh, most importantly, set the controls for the heart of the fun.